Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 2, Lesson 3, Efficiently Adding Integers and Other Rational Numbers. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students understand the rules for adding integers. Adding integers with the same sign by adding the absolute values and using the common sign. Adding integers with opposite signs by subtracting the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value and using the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Finally, students justify the rules using arrows and a number line or by using the integer game and extend their findings to begin to include sums of rational numbers. So let's start by taking a look at example one, and this should be somewhat of review from what we've been doing just so we can start looking at some patterns that are going on. So part A says, represent the sum of three plus five using arrows on the number line. So this is stuff we've done before. We always start at zero, and it's a positive three, so I'm going to move up three. And then I am adding on five, so I would start here and move up five units. And this gives me a final answer of eight. So what is the sum? Eight. Why do you think that adding two positive numbers will always give you a greater positive number? So notice, when I start out with a positive, I'm moving to the right. And the farther I get away from zero to the right side of zero, the larger my number is getting. So when I add on another positive, I'm really going to get an even larger positive number because I'm moving farther away from zero. Part B says represent the sum of negative three plus negative five using arrows that represent negative three and negative five on the number line. And you'll note that if this were the integer game, we'd simply combine negative three and negative five to get a value of negative eight. So that really should be our answer. So let's double check that on the number line. Starting at zero, I am going to move down to negative three. Now notice I went to the left because it's a negative number. So this number is going to get smaller as it goes further and further left of zero. From there, I'm going to move down five more units to the left. This one representing the negative three, this one representing negative five, and I do in fact get an answer or a sum of negative eight. So why do you think that adding two negative numbers will always give you a smaller negative? It's kind of the opposite logic that we just saw in part A. So in this case, the further I get away from zero on the left-hand side, the smaller my numbers get. So here we move to the left three, and then we move to the left five more units. And so every time I move further and further away from zero on the left-hand side, it's getting smaller and smaller. So if we take a look at the two examples that we just did, you can see that in the first case, I added two positive numbers and I got a positive answer. So here we had a positive plus a positive gave us a positive answer. And then in the part B example, I had a negative plus a negative gave me a negative answer. So essentially what I'm looking at here is a rule being formed. If we look at what the pattern is here, we can see that when I have the signs that are the same, they're going to add together to get the same sign. So two positives make a positive and two negatives make a negative. The other thing I wanna note here is that if you look at the two answers we got, one was a positive eight and one was a negative eight. So when we take the absolute value of the numbers, five and three, no matter what, if I add those together, I'm going to get a value of eight. The sign is really just determined when I look at the pattern that's going on with positives and negatives. So this really creates our rule. When you're adding integers with the same sign, you're simply going to take the absolute value of those numbers, add them together, and then keep the sign. So let's kind of um, reword this. Same signs. Means you keep the sign and add the numbers. All right, let's take a look at example two. Example two A says represent five plus a negative three using arrows on the number line. So I'm gonna start out at zero, move up five units because it is a positive five. But from there, I have to move back left three units because it's a negative three. So here, I'm gonna move down one, two, three units. 
And so my final position here actually turns out to be 2. So the sum of these two numbers is 2. So if we were to represent the sum using an arrow, how long would the arrow be and what direction would it point? So let's change our color here and take a look at what they're asking. How long would the arrow be to represent 2? Well, basically, we would start at 0 and we would move over 2 units to the right. Let's take a look at part B. It says represent 4 plus a negative 7 using arrows on the number line. So I'm going to start from 0, move up positive 4 units. But from there, I need to move down 7 units. So above here, I'm going to move down. If I move to 0, I've gone 4. So I need to go 3 more units to the left. And this represents a negative 7. So I can see here that my result is going to be a negative 3. What is the relationship between the direction of the arrow representing the sum and the direction of the arrows representing the p-value and the q-value? If you take a look at the two problems that we looked at, the first one we did was a 5 plus a negative 3, and we got an answer of 2. Now as I look at this, this reminds me of 5 minus 3 giving us an answer of 2. Likewise, if we look at 4 plus a negative 7, we got an answer of negative 3. Well, if I think of 4, 7, and 3, what comes to mind is 7 minus 4 gives us 3. So essentially what I can do to figure out what my values are going to be is I can simply subtract the numbers. And notice when I say that, I'm taking the absolute value because I'm ignoring the sign for now and I'm going to subtract the numbers in the order that makes sense. So the bigger number minus the smaller number. Then I have to decide what my answer is going to be. So if I look at my two examples here, we had a positive 5 and a negative 3. The positive 5 had a bigger value than our 3 does, or a larger value. So we would actually keep the sign here because this is what pushed it further to the right of 0. So my final answer then is going to be positive. So that's why we came up with a positive 2. In this example, though, you'll notice 7 has a greater value than 4 does. So when I'm looking at those two numbers, I notice 7 is negative. That's going to pull it further to the left of 0 and down into the negatives. So my answer here is going to be a negative 3. So the relationship we're really looking at here is the sign of the number with the larger absolute value basically determines the direction of the sum arrow. So our rule for adding integers with the opposite sign is we will subtract the absolute values and using the sign of the integer with the greater absolute value. So let's reword this one too. So if we have different signs, we're simply going to subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the larger. All right, let's take a look at our final example, number three. They ask us to find the sum of six plus a negative two and one fourth. The addition of rational numbers follows the same rule. So notice um, in the first couple examples, we only worked with integers. But I want to show you in this example, it works for all rational numbers. So fractions, decimals, those are all included in this. So the first thing I need to know is what's the absolute value of the two numbers? So the absolute value of 6. And just to recall, the absolute value is basically asking what's the distance between that number and 0? And distance is never negative, so whatever number it is, it's simply going to make it positive. So 6 stays 6. However, if we look at the absolute value of negative 2 and 1 fourth, it would be 2 and 1 fourth units away from 0. So this becomes positive. Then we're going to subtract the absolute values. 6 is larger, so I'm going to take that first. Now, in order to subtract these, let's say I don't have a calculator, I need to borrow one whole from 6. So that would borrow one whole would make it 5. And then I want to have a denominator of 4. So my one whole will become 4 over 4. So let's take away 2 and 1 fourth. So here we would say 4 minus 1 would leave us with 3 out of the 4. And then 5 minus 2 leaves us with 3. 
The final part of this rule is that I want to take the sign of the number that has the greater absolute value. So of these two, 6 is a greater absolute value, so we're going to take the sign of the original 6, which was positive. So my final answer is going to be positive 3 and 3 fourths. In this lesson, you have learned several integer rules. The first one being that you're going to add integers with the same sign by adding the absolute values and then using the common sign, meaning keep the sign. Steps for adding numbers with opposite signs. You first want to find the absolute value of each of the numbers, subtract them, and then you'll take the sign of the number that has the greater absolute value. And finally, we learned that to add rational numbers, such as fractions or decimals, you're going to follow the same rules used to add integers.